In the high, frigid air over the Baltic, two NATO fighters streaked side by side, allies in the same alliance, bound by trust, code, and decades of cooperation. Yet within seconds, that trust began to fracture. A Swedish JAS-39 Gripen, designed for flexibility and independence, suddenly locked its radar onto a NATO Eurofighter Typhoon. No warning, no explanation. What followed wasn't a declared engagement, it was something far more dangerous. A silent, electronic duel between allies, shrouded by confusion, pride, and classified technology. Behind the incident lay layers of tension, secret data links, incompatible identification codes, and the ghosts of Cold War mistrust. By the time controllers on the ground intervened, one thing had become clear. In modern coalition warfare, even allies can become each other's greatest unknown. Before we continue, where are you watching from today? Comment below. This section sets the scene. NATO's growing Baltic air policing missions after Russia's assertive moves post-2014. Introduced the mixed presence of European fighters, Gripens, Typhoons, and F-16s operating under shared command but distinct national protocols. Established Sweden's role as a close NATO partner, though not yet a member at the time of the event, and the unique autonomy of its defense doctrine. Contextualized the Gripens' reputation as a thinking man's fighter, agile, networked, and built for independence. Unfold the operational setting. Joint exercises over the Baltic Sea, where NATO and Swedish Air Force units train in defensive intercepts. Detail the interoperability challenges differing IFF identification friend or foe systems. Secure data links and electronic warfare protocols. Introduce the pilot characters, a Swedish grip and leader known for precision, and a NATO typhoon pilot renowned for aggressive maneuvering. Tension begins to surface, as minor technical mismatches raise doubts during simulated radar locks and electronic countermeasures. The exercise escalates. During a mock intercept, the Swedish Gripen's targeting system suddenly shifts from simulated engagement to active radar lock on a friendly typhoon. Describe cockpit dialogue, rising confusion, and the eerie silence over the secure channel. Commanders on both sides scramble for clarity. The incident's ambiguity, malfunction, or deliberate test sends shockwaves through the networked command system. Dive into the mechanics, how the Gripen's PSO-5A radar and its advanced data link can see. Beyond conventional friend or foe boundaries, Explain how a software patch or signal spoof could trigger false target identification. Compare Swedish and NATO avionics philosophies, Sweden's emphasis on autonomy versus NATO's centralized control. Blend this with cockpit-level sensory detail, the flicker of warning lights, the pulse of the pilot's breathing, the calculation of milliseconds. The radio crackled back to life terse clipped, and cold. Disengage. Both aircraft, brake lock immediately, the Gripen's pilot eased back, sensors resetting from combat mode to standby. On his radar, the Typhoon's icon flickered from red to blue again, a friend restored. For a few long seconds, the Baltic sky fell silent, the hum of the engine the only sound between two men who had just stared into an accidental standoff. Back at the forward operating base, the debrief began under fluorescent lights and restrained tones. The Swedish pilot swore his radar lock had not been intentional. The Typhoon's systems logged it as active hostile. The room divided between those who blamed human error and those who whispered about incompatible encryption keys. Engineers from both sides poured over telemetry, but no one could quite agree on what had happened in that frozen patch of air. As the Typhoon pilot reviewed the data, he caught himself reliving the moment, the tone in his headset, the primal reflex to fight back, the uneasy realization that his enemy might have been a glitch. Across the table, his Swedish counterpart sat still, jaw clenched, every word measured. They were allies, yet something unseen had come between them, trust fractured by technology. When the session adjourned, both men walked out into the cold night, saying little. Above them, the sky was clear, unthreatening, and empty. But inside the command center, new protocols were already being written, quiet measures to prevent another friendly radar lock from ever happening again. What tactical decision surprised you most so far? Share your thoughts in the comments. Three days after the incident, the Baltic air was restless again. A new joint exercise was underway. Same airspace, same coalition roster, but now every pilot flew with a hint of unease. The Gripen squadron's orders were precise test radar sync and data link reliability under close observation. NATO's oversight officers watched from a control center in Estonia, monitoring every code transmission in real time. Yet tension buzzed through the comms net, a silence that spoke of unhealed mistrust. Then it began. Subtle anomalies rippled across the network. A typhoon's transponder briefly vanished from the shared tactical screen. A Gripen's radar reported unknown track bearing 140. Controllers demanded verification. Pilots hesitated, eyes flicking between instruments and instinct. Within minutes, the same pattern emerged, ghost locks, scrambled identifications, and IFF signals shifting from friendly to neutral without command input. Ground command ordered both aircraft to disengage, but the atmosphere had already changed. 
The Typhoon pilot, recalling the last encounter, flinched at the tone of his missile system priming automatically. Hold fire, came the clipped command, a reminder of how close they all stood to disaster. In the command center, political officers joined the feed. NATO officials demanded explanations. Swedish technicians defended their systems. Beneath the diplomacy, there was something deeper, a clash of doctrines. Sweden's emphasis on autonomous network defense collided with NATO's rigid data standardization. As the exercise wound down, both sides faced a quiet truth. The systems meant to unite them were now dividing them, and while no shots had been fired, the second silent dogfight had left scars that couldn't be logged in any report. In this section, recreate the second near crisis, a Gripen's radar again locks onto a typhoon, but this time the typhoon's electronic countermeasures respond automatically. Both aircraft react as if under attack, detail the split-second decision-making and sheer human discipline that prevents escalation, include ground controllers' frantic coordination and the psychological toll on both pilots torn between instinct and trust. Investigations begin. Classified briefings reveal that outdated NATO IFF codes conflicted with Sweden's updated encryption. No malice but a chilling glimpse into coalition vulnerability. The pilots meet privately at a debrief, silent acknowledgement replacing blame. The event is officially buried under the phrase technical irregularity, but its lesson spreads through command circles. Modern alliances can falter not through betrayal, but through code. Zoom out to a strategic level. Explore how interoperability remains both NATO's strength and its Achilles heel. Examine how electronic misreads could trigger catastrophic chain reactions in real combat. Connect to broader themes of trust, technology and alliance politics. Draw on recent real-world examples of similar incidents involving partner nations. End with a reflective tone. Sweden's later entry into NATO is portrayed as both reconciliation and evolution, a testament to learning from near failure. The Gripen that turned on its friend becomes a symbol, not of betrayal, but of the razor-thin edge between cooperation and chaos in modern air combat. Close with an introspective line about silent skies, invisible codes, and the fragility of trust above the clouds.